Welcome indeed to World's Cool Down, where we break down the day and look towards the matches coming up tomorrow with two knockout series on the books. Uh, let's see how today played out. And I think we should start with what we just saw. EDG versus Detonation Focus Me. 3-0, and Raz, you were saying right as that game ended, it looks like ADG is just getting stronger and stronger. Yeah, because that was the most confident I've seen from Haro so far at Worlds Plans. Mm -hmm. uh, we needed to see that. He got in this Lee Sin game. For a lot of people, they'll look at that and say, well, that game doesn't count, but for him to be able to come onto a game that was nearly assured in the series and prove his worth going into group stage, yeah. Really well done. I think it absolutely counts, especially when you compare it to the game he had against Infinity, right? This yes. is his first Worlds win, and that is actually meaningful as they move on to the group stage where the teams get better and better. And I'm going to regret this the moment I say it, but coming into Worlds, I had EDG as a top six team at the World Championship, so they need to look convincing during the play-in stage, and I think today... They did that. Well, and I think when we just saw the scores there, that's actually what you want to see from a team that's coming in from a seed from the major region. And I feel like C9, of course, had a bit more trouble with Gambit. So, you know, you can make your own conclusions off of that. And we will what in just a bit. What conclusions would those be, Shot? Mm. Well, I'm going to ask you in just a bit. Uh, <laughs> but I think the, the key here is that those are two very different best of fives. And possibly the EDG scenario is the one you want to have, right? And especially Haru, you mentioned it already. He came in, he dropped that game versus Infinity. You said he needed to shake off some stage jitters. Well, playing a Lee Sin and playing it almost to perfection yes. will probably do that for you. It's funny. Uh, usually, you know, you'd expect people to come in with the Lee Sin to begin with and see if, you f if it fails to begin mm -hmm. with, then you mm -hmm. hop onto something else. But some of the LPL junglers have been using it in game clutch moments. Uh, Haru is an excellent example. I know at some point we'll start rolling the highlight packages and the fact that he's able to get the excellent, you know, alt, the Lee Sin flash alt kicks into another member to get the execute damage. Just the small, like the details mm -hmm. like that is just a good reason why you'd love to see him. And he, we didn't get to see too much of his kindred. We'll see more of his carry picks as we go on in the tournament. Well, speaking about carries for EDG, looking forward, Jat, uh, e, both Scout and iBoy has been super impressive and I yeah. think will be serious threats for anyone they go up against. Exactly. Last year, iBoy was that 80 carry prodigy and Scout was this incredibly inconsistent, high risk, high reward mid laner. We're seeing more of the high reward and less of the cost of the risks they were taking. The Akali game, I think, was very high risk, but it was his best game of the series. I thought he was the top performer on the team in the regular season for EDG, but also here in play-in. So he's been able to carry a lot of that success through and he had a really good day today. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to seeing in the group stage. We touched on it already beforehand, but I really believe that this could be kind of, and it sounds silly to say breakout because he's always been a fantastic mid laner, but I do want him to have this like coming of age moment on an international stage in a tournament like Worlds. Exactly, there's a big difference between being the guy who subs in for Pawn, which is what he was in 2016, yes. subs in now with Pawn, or being the guy that gets a CS lead on Faker to ultimately lose the game, versus being the primary carry on a successful Worlds team. So this is still an opportunity for him to break out, even if he's been around for a while. And honestly, he provides focus for the squad, something they've been lacking quite for, throughout the year, uh, bringing in between Clear Love and Haro. What it is, it he simplifies the game. With mm -hmm. how talented he is, how well he's playing right now. During the regular season, it was just play through scout and you'll find your win mid lane and then throughout the team fights, iBoy will start coming through. Now the 80 carry meta is really starting to come up. iBoy is coming in a lot more earlier than you would expect during the, you know, in comparison to the regular season. And so the tag team between scout and iBoy is honestly what you have to be able to track for this team. Yeah, and you wouldn't know it by seeing his player cam right there, but I feel like he's a really arrogant player, <laughs> uh, iBoy. Like even just the rocket jump he did very early on here, like he, did disrespect his opponents in a number of places, was not necessarily punished for it during this series, even not getting the Zaya alt off on a slow Heimer grenade that was coming towards it. But he still had some of these big pop-off moments, especially in this game one when they had the Nautilus versus Thresh, Thresh matchup, punished really hard early. Uh, Raz pointed out that he delays his ultimate a lot on Kaisa, which is very effective. And I think he had another good series. Yeah. And the, I remember people out there, global audience, will know Mako and Deft as a, as a duo being excellent during the international stages. Mako and iBoy is something hilarious to watch. Because a lot of the time, even if you listen in to the comms for the team, it's Mako pulling them back and letting them go when it happens. <laughs> so as you were mentioning, you know, uh, the fact that iBoy 
just jumps in at the end as a janitorial. That's where the multi-kill comes off. You can usually hear Mako say, okay, now you can go. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's time. He tells him when he can go in. Well. Too many times during the regular season, does it not pay off and he gets the chance. You can really tell the, the, the relationship between them at near the end is really paying off. Yeah, and I think most people know this by now, but Mako has been the guy that for the last two years has been trained to be the new captain over clear of, of that lineup and the shot caller. So I can only imagine what it's like to have to shot call all the rest and have to keep this loose kind of puppy who's, who's wanting yep. to go on forward in lane. Um, but now, I don't want to sell the other members of EDG short because I'm looking forward to where they could end up in groups, right? And let's just say they end up in the team Liquid Mad KT group. That could be very interesting. And besides Scout and iBoy, I think Haro was impressive in this game. He's had his moments. Clear Love is always there, of course, and is a solid rock. Ray has been phenomenal, yes. uh, phenomenal at times. Mako, even from a mechanical perspective and a counterpick perspective in the support, all of a sudden, this is shaping up, as you say, as a top six or more team, as a very, very scary lineup. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see which group they eventually get drawn into. Uh, if all of the favorites win, it's going to be a between that group A or group C. But in the group C that you just mentioned, I think they're absolutely competitors in that group. I think especially with the growth that the LPL For has first had place? this year. Probably not for first. I wouldn't predict it that way just yes. because I have KT as my favorite for the World Championships. Uh, but I think going up against Team Liquid, iBoy has great mechanics, right? Scout, if they play through mid lane, could potentially go up against Poe Belter in a really fortuitous way. But the worry for me with EDG is you see all the positives in the play-in stage, but you don't see as many of the negatives. And they were the fifth place team during a lot of the LPL summer split. They had an identity crisis in the year, figuring out how to play. Like it, it worked in that game when Ray is solo killing people like he's on a carry when he's actually on a tank, yes. mm -hmm. right? Because he had all the gold uh, and that's how he really wants to play. But that's just not possible against a lot of these other teams. And if they can't craft the right team compositions, they don't necessarily have a great mix of player strengths that they can consistently hit on. And on top of that, uh, they're of course also fighting against this whole EDG never got past quarterfinals at Worlds or won that best of five. Now, now they have, of course, but going into groups and going up against the top dogs is a whole different story. So I think they have a lot to fight up against. Mm -hmm. But Raz, it is my feeling that with some of that new blood, like iBoy and with Scout coming into his like prime time in this world championship, this could be a different story. How do you feel it as an LPL expert? Yeah, so here's the thing, I always get burnt. Last time round, <laughs> like every year comes through, I have EDG coming out of the group stages. Last time round was obviously just like, a, it was an unfortunate period for them when it comes down to shaking nerves. So I think that they're putting in a good amount of effort in that adventure. Uh, I think Team Liquid has a tough draw. I think North America has a tough Would draw. Would have, yeah. I think with Team Liquid, if it goes down to that versus EDG, that the individual talent, Scout versus Poe Belter is going to be a rough one. I think that Ray matches up well with Impact. And I think the individual talent coming in from Ixmithy, the best of the West jungler, uh, versus Haro and Clearlove. When it comes to team fighting, I need to see Team Liquid get challenged in that one, where EDG, they definitely got challenged in the LPL time again with team fights. So mm -hmm. I would love to see that coming into the group stages, but I have EDG on that one. You want a small reply before we move on? Or? I'd rather have G2 and Team Liquid's group. Well, <laughs> there we go. I think a lot of people would. Uh, there we go. So we'll see how that plays out. Then then let's move on for our next um, well conversation about the match that we saw now a couple of hours ago between North America's Cloud9 and the LCL's Gambit Esports. Uh, so, Jad, of course you weren't here to analyze it, but it went all the way to five games. I just want to preface this with a little food for thought, right, before we go mm -hmm. into this. We're obviously looking at the C9 up as a, a lineup that is very, or an organization that is super experienced with some members that have been there. Now that it's gone to five games, and now that we saw some close games in the playing stage. Should we not just look at it with a different lens in that they have three rookies that have not been here? And should we then possibly look at it a bit differently? That's the only thing I want to throw out there before, because I know we have our doubts, right? That's the only. Oh yeah, I mean, you can start. I, I was ready for all of the flame and the jokes if they yeah. wouldn't have made it. And you can still make the jokes, right? Five games, that moves it to nine in the play-in stage. They're getting as much possible practice. Uh, oh, by, the way, <laughs> by the way, this is our third seed, not our second seed. Don't worry. 
Just wait until we get to oh, the no. stage. But the reality is C9 was seen by most as the second best team in North America and that they were supposed to be able to roll over this Gambit team. But I like the point you bring up about the inexperience of the rookies because that is very real. And so often that is looked past. Outside of the NALCS studio, Blabber and Licorice hadn't really had good games, right? They got 3 0'd in the finals against Team Liquid. And then when they came back here, then they were able to beat TSM. So I think actually getting settled will be important and they should play a little bit better come group stage. But uh, the inexperience I think shows in a lot of those moments when they can't really play more than just the one way. Well, I think it just, it, we should have put that out there. I'm glad we did. And then now we can move on and look at kind of the things we actually do need to see change or the strengths they can work off. I'll go out and say that I think Licorice is surprisingly really settled in uh, coming into the plans. He's come out, he's eaten a lot of bands from the enemy team. The team mm. really respect his picks. So Urgot versus, uh, the Urgot versus Aatrox matchup, he has it down packed where they're now even taking away the Lissandra because of him. So yeah. there, were a, there were a few moments where he had bad moments, rough moments, but I felt like he was a standout performer alongside. He also had a game winning play with the Lissandra, right? So I think for him, there's definitely very much a, or positives to build on. Yeah, Licorice was a big contributor to all of their wins in their series. It, it was a five game series. Yes. But the games they lost were relatively close and drawn out, and the games they won were stomps. So it was a decisive 3-2, as decisive you can possibly yeah. make that. Uh, and his champion select threat is going to be a boon for them when they move in to the later stages. Because there's also the chance, right, and especially with EDG or a lot of these other teams, you don't want to show that much in the play-in when victory is supposed to be a certainty. Mm -hmm. C9 got pushed, and you, I think in that last game, saw what they really wanted to do. They want to play Rise mid, Kaisa bot lane, Alistair, right, for Zazel, stuff yep. like that. And I think the positive there is when they do play that, they look much better, and they look actually very, very mm -hmm. intimidating. And one of the things there is Sneaky, the guy that's been there forever for me again brought home the bacon for c9 especially in that last game yeah he's been the most consistent member of you know c9 throughout the entire, <laughs> exactly oh uh, yeah uh, yeah literally but during the play-ins he's been doing very well for the team on the kaisa the real question mark is when the draven started to come through mm -hmm. the first pick when they were secured in group stages i thought that was just hiding picks Mm -hmm. Suddenly you bring it out in the best of five and you can still come out and say that maybe they're looking past G uh, Gambit in the series, but it really feels like for whatever reason they, f they feel like the Draven Thresh lane domination is how they want to play it out. I wonder if that's what they want to bring into th supposedly the group of death when they do get drawn in. Yeah, exactly. And what he points out there is that if the favorites win tomorrow, so if G-Rex and G2 win tomorrow, C9 will be going into group B, which is the R&D Samsung Vitality group, which is seen as the group of death. Yeah. However, Sneaky sixth year at the world championship has only failed to make the quarterfinals once and that was in 2015 so uh he showed it in that game five of the series he is a clutch untiltable performer is yes. what it really feels like in these big moments so i don't think they're going to be pulling out draven thresh when they're up against uzi ming but it's not gonna happen. it never hurts to have it in your back pocket it right? doesn't <laughs> hurt um two more things i want to bring up about c9 after what we saw today uh we saw now the blabber after two games okay we'll bring sven in mm -hmm. we will see what we do we heard from uh reaper beforehand we are going to bring him in just so he gets a couple of stage games yeah. um i looking at everything we have like the glaring mistakes that blabber made but i think he had a pretty good performance overall if we look at everything and is this now turning into kind of a strength because we talk so much about this fanatic six-man roster right mm. or other people but is this now turning in for you guys to like a valid six-man roster or is blabber still a risk factor so i don't know how you feel about this jet but this is giving me rng vibes <laughs> literally carsa and mm. mlxg mm. blabber when he came in there is the stark benefit of just you know where the fights are starting yeah blabber is very much headstrong where you if there is a lack of direction beforehand, there's certainly direction now, and that's what I really favor. There's only Blabber. one direction. There, he is, <laughs> and it's a good band. Yeah. The fact that he just goes forward, so I really like that coming out of Blabber, but I think the better of the two, funny enough, is, is, is Sven Skarin in, in the more consistent slower mm -hmm. games, just because a lot of the times you can pick apart some of Blabber's play and saying you came in too early, you came in too early, but they're there first, and that's what I like about Blabber. Yeah, I think you nailed it. I do think... Uh, it, it depends how you look at it if you're trying to decide is it a strength or not. What it is, is it's an ability to cover up each other's weaknesses. Yeah. Because 
People forget that Sven Skaren was playing really badly in the summer split before Blaver came in. So I don't think C9 has an ideal jungler right now. You would love it if you had a guy who could give your team direction and was consistent. They don't have that. Blaver's an inconsistent player who gives them yeah. direction. Mm. And then Sven Skaren can still be the calming presence, but he's not been performing at a Carsa level, which is what I think they would want in an ideal world, yeah. which is why they're still playing both. All right. Um, final thing before we move on. Uh, Jensen? today I don't think was very impressive. Uh, do we have any reason for concern, Jet, after, you know, usually when you watch him in the NALCS, he is a very consistent and good factor for C9. This seemed a bit out of character. Yeah, I think it is a moment for concern because Jensen has actually struggled in a lot of high pressure situations in the past. Uh, it's another one of those things where it was nice having Golden Glue there. Obviously, teams can only bring a six-man roster to the World Championship. That is part of the rules, and he is, again, the, the sole starter. I think there's nothing they can do about it, but they're not happy about how he played today. Okay, yeah. Russ? I would agree with that. I All think right. that there's stark moments. He'll look at that. Hopefully he gets better at that, but it's a hard thing to really get over nerves in those situations. Yeah. It is. Uh, hopefully now some of the jitters are off now yep. that he played in the playing stage. So C9 and EDG are through, and for more on how he locked his spot in groups for EDG, Avali caught up with his top laner. Sorry, Avali. Thanks, guys. I am here with EDG's Ray. Congratulations on the win. I mean, 3-0 stomp. You guys were the clear winners. Just how far can EDG go at Worlds? Uh, first, I want to say, uh, I played I played in NLCS the last one year. Uh, so I can speak English li a little bit, but right now I have to say Korea because I, I'm so much forget English, so I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm so sad. 그래서 이제 첫 번째 질문은 이제 EDG가 정말 압도적인 승무를, 승리를 거뒀습니다. 네. 그럼 이번 롤드컵에서 어디까지 진출할 것 같으신가요? 어, 제, 어, 제 생각에는 저희 팀이 지금 아직 정, 아직 전력이 풀 전력으로 올라오지 않았기 때문에 저희가 약간 아직은 저는 예상이 안 되고요. 저는 개인적인 생각으로 일단은 심, 그러니까 조별 예선을 먼저 뚫고 올라오고 싶습니다. So I think we are not playing at our full potential. So I just want to make sure to get out of the group stage. And you mentioned playing in NA before, and I want to uh, kind of look at that because your former teammates, Cloud9, just qualified for groups earlier today. So kind of reflecting, how would you say your year of boot camping with Cloud9 and NA really helped you get to where you are in Worlds today? 네, 이제 신화 북미에서 활동하신 거 언급하셨는데 사실 친정팀인 신화인도 지금 진출한 상태고요. 북미에서 그러면 부트캠프한 그 경험 어땠는지 좀 궁금합니다. 음, 어 부트캠프요? 장난 약간 장난식으로. 아 어, 일단은 아 어, 제가 지, 롤드컵에 와서 다시 신화인을 만나서 되게 지금은 되게 기쁘고요. 왜냐면은 제가 전 팀에 있었던 신화인하고 다시 만날 만날 수 있었고 약간 예전 생각나서. 저는 지금도 약간 되게 재밌어요. 약간 그리고 앞으로도 기대되고 예, 약간 그런 그런 것 같아요. So basically I'm really happy to see my old team C9 here and I'm just enjoying all the experience with C9. And you guys can either get placed into group A or group C. But are there any teams maybe outside of those groups that you're excited to play against? 네, 이제 그룹 A 또는 C에 갈수 있는데 그두 그룹이나 아니면 거기서 벗어났을 때 존재하는 팀에서 만나고 싶은 팀이 있을까요? 어, 일단은 저는 일단은 제가 가장 만나고 싶은 두 팀이 있거든요. 두 팀이 일단 TL하고 C9을 가장 만나고 싶어요. 왜냐면은 저는 일단은 북미를 뛰었기 때문에 되게 북미에 대한 예정도 아직 가지고 있고 약간 북미 팀이 잘하기를 바라는 일단 팬으로서 그것도 있지만 일단은 TL 같은 경우는 저랑 같이 C9이 있었을 때 임팩트 선수하고 같이 있었잖아요. 그래서 제가 굉장히 많이 배웠거든요. 밑에서 일단 그런 이유로 일단 TL하고 만나고 싶고 두 번째 C9 같은 경우는 제가 전 팀에 있었고 제가 이만큼 성장했다라는 걸 보여주고 싶어서 북미 팬들한테 보여주고 싶어서 저는 그두 팀하고 가장 붙고 싶습니다. So basically TL and C9 because first of all he had he's just he played in NA so he has huge love for NA teams and also in terms of Team Liquid he learned a lot of from a lot from Impact while he was in NA and in terms of C9 he just want to show all the NA fans and C9 players that how much he improved. All right, I heard those names loud and clear. Congratulations again and wishing you the best of luck. That's it for us here. Back to you. 
That was awesome. From him trying to speak English and doing it very well to Amelie trying to <laughs> get the sarcasm going NA with the boot, boot camps. camp hey, in NA. Hey, I'm just saying, Core JJ was nothing until after oh he played on God. Team Dignitas and won a world championship. Like, really. Gravity chamber. You never know. Yeah. That's going to happen after All right. NA. Well, let's take a look at some of the guys who did awesome today, the MasterCard players of the game. We see that in the first series, the, UN, the awards went to Blabber for C9. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going ahead. So Blabber for C9, Loading for Gambit, Sven, Skaren, Kira, and Sneaky. So it's evenly divided between some of the carries on both teams, which I guess is, is good enough. I was very happy that Kira came out and had a spectacular performance at the back end of the series, because the very beginning of it was having a rough go of things, yeah. including the group stages. So for him to really come out at the end of it and have that carry performance was really good for him. Mm -hmm. And Sven Skaren snagging up one of them together with Blabber. Yep. So 50-50. Right, right after he subbed in, you can see at work right there. Blabber, good game one. Real bad game two. Svenskaren comes in. <laughs> good game two. There he goes. And then the players of the game for our second series, only three, as it was a 3-0. Mako, Scout, and Haro. No eye boy. I think it was difficult because he was always carrying, but we wanted to give the praise to Mako in the first game. So there we go. It's always tough when it comes to A, Stomps, and B, EDG, just because of the fact that they have so many strong players. Look at Ray. He didn't get any recognition. Yeah. And he was the orange just yeah, stomping man. people. It was rough. I think. Uh, you know, people will be happy, or players will be happy that you guys saw the support role in that first game stomp, because usually they get left out, so. Yeah, I mean, there's sometimes, some supports think their job is way too important. They're like, <laughs> I'm doing 95% of the lane, like really all you gotta do is right click. Yeah. It's hard for both of them, but in situations where it's hook versus hook and you're setting up your to carry as well as Mako did in game one, Got to give them the nod. Yeah, uh, so we'll see what happens. And uh, tomorrow also we'll know where C9 and EDG will end up. So let's take a look at the current groups for the next stage of World. So we can start theocrafting, theory crafting rather, just a little bit. So if all the first seeds qualify, C9 will mm -hmm. most likely be placed into the group of death, uh, which is group B, correct? All right, so if you are a fan of the North American LCS and Cloud9, <laughs> You were also a fan of Infinity. Oh. Let me tell you about these guys. So really, they are so, great. Yeah. By the way, yeah, the only reason why you would yeah. ever vote against EU is because no, as an NA fan, you're always for the other. Uh, hey, team, right? I'm just saying that if you want C9 to get out of groups, that is the best chance. It has yeah. nothing to do with EU. <laughs> it is just a coincidence that they are playing against the EU team. Ideally scripted by yeah. uh, the people up above. No, uh, seriously. So if we start theory crafting, obviously this would be a hella hard group for C9. That's not beat around the bush, but uh, that's just the way the cookie crumbles, I guess, when you go through plans. Yep, hard group for C9, hard group for uh, Team Liquid as well, because these are where the teams would be placed in if everything goes according to plan. Oh, yeah. So you get into yeah. a situation where these are these are rough. This is tough stuff, but like I feel like when you're seeing the play-in stages, what you saw last year, nothing really goes according to plan. A good example would be Immortals, we're very close to being upset, upsetting uh, Fnatic in those situations. So, like, still watch out for those games. But as it stands, I don't really see too much happening with those teams. Yeah, it is not something that you would ever favor Cloud9 to get out of. But you could make the argument that they have the advantage against Vitality. And then you could make the argument that Gen G may not show up because they did not make a run until the regional qualifier. They're actually the fifth place team in the LCK summer split. So uh, there is always that possibility especially when you're dealing with... I like it, yeah. I just wanted to say, too, that C9 can come out of the gates really quickly. Mm -hmm. So if they're a fast-paced team going up against RNG that wants to take some time, formulate their team fights, put gold on Uzi, those are, you know, ex you know, recipes for upsets. Yeah, I think the important thing is that we can logically assume things, but it is worlds. You can never rule anything out. Just look at yeah. what Vietnam did only last year. So Wh When's the last time we got the pick and brackets right? Yeah, like, <laughs> never. There's usually one person one in the world who like that does it. it. So yeah. as much as you want to say, like, yes, China, Korea, clear favorites in group. Yes, C9. C9 was in a China, Korea group a couple years ago and also last year, and they made it up both of those years. Like, they it's did possible. Fine. So if we think the impossible is possible, let's look at tomorrow for NALCS and then for Cloud9, they would have G2 preferably losing to Infinity. Uh, but I think we can agree that both the seeds from the major regions are favorites. So tell me how clear are the favorites? Um, from my personal opinion, uh, I believe that G-Rex and Supermassive are a bit mismatched, much like we saw today in the last best of five versus a very early game heavy team versus a team that likes to take it slow. Uh, in G2 versus Infinity, I I've seen some good things out of Infinity. I'm yeah, not gonna lie. Uh, so I think both these 
are going to be much closer than what we saw to, well, I guess the Today. first series is crazy. But <laughs> the fact that for G2 versus Infinity, G2 having really strong early game, mm -hmm. you know, usually can end it based off their early game performance versus Infinity, that will fight you if they're in a deficit based as an example versus EDG. Uh, the second series, I know we're going to get into it, but that one should be fun. I've always been uh, pushing Supermassive as a team that's been great at being able to control games, take them a lot longer, force these team fights, versus G-Rex that was never really challenged in these later portions of the game. He's been how much, smashing lanes early How much on. are we like reading into that final game, the tiebreaker we saw of Supermassive versus G2? Because that looked like a completely different game from most of the other games they've played if we assume that G-Rex is going to go early game heavy in that series. Well, the last one, I mean, both when it came to those the three games that we saw, you know, G2 versus Supermassive, we just saw a really stark drafting question mm. that, like, how much uh, of a counterpicking does GBM need because he put himself in a really bad situation because of it? And then how much does lane domination, how much is that required for um, the Supermassive's bottom lane? Because going towards an Ash and Tom Kench lane, or at least just going for an Ash lane, while it takes away damage later on in the game, you can tell how much they were dipping into just really needing the lane uh, priority when they lost Varus and Tom Kench. Mm -hmm. We'll yeah. see. I'm really excited for the second best of five if I'm unbiasing myself from the whole where is C9 going to play there we go. discussion. Yeah. Uh, because last year, the LMS three seed was the only three seed that didn't make it to the group stage. So G-Rex and the LMS are accused of being a top heavy region frequently. So mm -hmm. the fact that they were the most dominant team throughout the play in group stage gives them something to prove. And then also, Turkey and Supermassive have a lot to prove as well. Because yeah. if there's a chance for them to win, you would see it's right here and they can continue it. Because when you look at all of the emerging regions and play in regions, Oftentimes, it's super massive right near the top of that, and they want to get over the edge. I would like, I, if it was possible, I'd love for them both to go through and, and make a statement, yeah. but that is not possible. Uh, so we're going to move on. Do you have a final? I just wanted to say that for GBM, it means a lot for him because when we were at MSI, he really felt like he let the team down yeah. in the final games when they went up against Evos. Now he's at a situation where he can go up to that best of five. You can tell he's a, he's a lot more headstrong in these situations that it should change the, the direction of these games. Yeah, and hopefully we got all the way to eight games today. Let's hope we get to 10 games tomorrow. On that note, we're going to sign off from all of us here, the casters and the entire live broadcast.